Uh, it's actually quite impressive how metop data are being used by meteorologists all over the world. And um, in operational meteorology, probably the major impact of metop data comes through numerical weather prediction. You know that meteorologists use these uh, weather models that are, they use every day. And actually there is a combination of instruments on board the METOP satellite which are very complementary and together they act to improve the quality, the performance of these numerical models which are used by the forecasters. And there are different ways we can compute the improvement or the quality brought by these um, different satellite um, data. And one of them is in terms of um, gain in predictability. It has been shown that YASI data alone, which is you know, one of the major instruments in METOP, can actually gain a few hours of, of predictability in the short range, which is in the two, three day forecast. This means that actually the forecasters can anticipate a bit better the weather it will, it will be in a couple of days time. And this actually then helps uh, our job, which is to save lives and also to uh, actually deliver benefits for weather dependent activities such as tourism, economy, transport, energy, whatever. And there's another way we can quantify how METOP data improves the forecast. It is in terms of percentage compared to other observations. And we have recently conducted a, a study at Météo France where we've computed the weight of the METOP data compared to all the other observations we have in our system. And we computed it to be 24%. So one satellite alone actually brings 24% of the benefit of all the observations we have in our global system, which is not only all the other satellites, but also radio sons, you know, these balloons we launch twice a day in various places on Earth, and also aircraft, ship, buoy data, everything. And if we now compare the benefit brought by METOP data compared to all the other satellite data alone, and not all the other data, but just the satellite data, then the weight of METOP is about 35%. So just one satellite brings more than a third of the whole of um, the constellation of satellites, which is a huge weight actually. This is the largest unique contribution to the observing system. And these figures are not completely uh, dependent on our system. Actually, it is very, we, ha we have almost the same figures as some other centers which perform the same sort of studies. For instance, the Met Office in the UK have very similar figures. So really Met Op is the main contributor in numerical weather forecasting. Now bench forecasters also like to um, use Met Op data on their own to display on their screens to help them have a feeling for what the atmosphere is doing at the moment, independently of the models and they actually quite like the imagery on board of METOP. You know, there is an imager, AVHRR, which provides a very fine resolution images all over the world, and in particular over the northern latitudes and polar caps, where the other satellites don't go, like geostationary satellites don't provide useful information over the high latitudes. So this is quite useful to see, um, to see the structures in the weather. And these uh, instruments also help to determine the sea surface temperature, which is one of the major products for marine forecasting. Now, another source of data which uh, forecasters like to display, the scatterometer data. Scatterometer provides wind observations at the surface of the oceans, which is really a crucial source of information to see the fronts coming. In the northern latitudes, you can see the big uh, frontal cyclones coming, but also it is absolutely crucial for uh, meteorology in the tropics, in particular when a tropical cyclone comes, this is really very well depicted by the scatterometer data, so having them on your screen you really are able to locate precisely the tropical cyclone. And for us in Meteo France this is quite important because we have some responsibility in the tropical warning in the southwest Indian Ocean, so um, scatterometer data is also a source of very important data for us. The YASI instrument is a highly innovative instrument and it's already one of the most informative of all the remote sensing instruments of, on both um, operational but also research platforms. And this is because it provides a wealth of data. It actually describes the atmospheric um, spectrum in the whole infrared range and at each single location it provides more than 8,000 individual pieces of information which is a huge quantity of data. And this is about two to three orders of magnitude more than the previous uh, sort of instruments we had in the infrared. So it is a bit of a challenge to actually handle all this information, but when we uh, actually manage to extract all the information we have, because of this very high spectral resolution, we manage to retrieve very precise and very accurate atmospheric characteristics because of this um, 
high spectral resolution, all this amount of data which is in the YASI instrument. So undoubtedly this YASI instrument is the single instrument providing the most contribution to numerical weather prediction at the moment. Uh, but it's not only used for numerical weather prediction because it has such a fine resolution, it can also see a lot of trace gases, for instance, and greenhouse gases. So a scientist who study atmospheric composition use YAZI uh, because it can measure concentrations of ozone, but also methanes or carbon monoxide. And this is quite important to understand the atmosphere. And it, was all, it can also see volcanic ash, and uh, we had um, an example of its use last year when the um, volcano, the Icelandic volcano erupted, and Yazi could really follow the volcanic, sh volcanic ash plume all over, all over Europe. And, you know, it's easy to understand that this has really big consequence for aviation safety. Um, and all, all of this is for science, but also for climate. Uh, because of its unique combination of parameters it can describe with a very high accuracy. So Yazi can describe, as we say, temperature, humidity, but also clouds and greenhouse gases. Actually, at the moment, Yazi is one of the key contributors to climate records and monitoring.